What's one internet reference that makes you laugh no matter what? One group of people I will never understand are the ones who have emotional, visceral reactions to being asked not to use a certain word anymore because it's offensive now. Like, I cannot think of a single word in any language that I would throw a hissy fit over not being able to use anymore. Like, imagine being like, hey, could you actually not use this word anymore? It's pretty offensive and hurtful to me. And there's about 20 other words that mean the exact same thing that you can still use instead. Mm, no. All landlords are parasites. That's pretty fucked up. Why? I mean, I know there's some bad landlords, but there's some good ones too. I'm not talking about how ethical or moral any individual landlord is. Then what are you even talking about? What I mean to say is that the economic position of landlord is a parasitic relationship. They're not parasites though. They literally provide you with a home. Did they build the house? No, but they probably paid to have it built by others. Okay, so let's say they built the house for 100K. I mean, that's pretty cheap, but sure. Just for simplicity. And they rent it out for 2,500 a month. And after four years, they made back their initial investment and then some. Yeah, but if they didn't make more money, then why would they do it? But it doesn't stop there, does it? They keep getting rent month after month, year after year, but they haven't produced anything new, right? I guess. So this is where we get to the whole parasite thing. All of us, we're going to work. We are making stuff and contributing things to society, producing goods and services, hopefully. But a landlord can just sit back and do nothing and just because they own a house, they get to siphon money out of the economy every single year. Literally, by definition, a parasite. Landlords aren't here to provide me with a home. They're here to make a profit. They don't care whether I'm housed or not. Landlords will literally leave vacant homes off the market to decrease the supply and drive up the price of the other ones. I mean, I guess they also lobby the government to increase rent as much as they can. I can't begin to tell you all the things landlords do that make them more money, but are terrible for us. And that's why we say, I'm kidding. Greetings, Bill Nye here with more on masks. Here's a map of the United States. The red ink shows where people are wearing masks. The black ink shows where people are getting sick with coronavirus. <laughs> I hope you can see the fewer the masks, the more the sick. And there's a perception that a virus can travel through the fibers of a mask like this red dot. Because viruses don't travel by themselves. No, they travel in little droplets of spit and snot. And the fibers are a tangle. So when the droplet gets into the fibers of a mask, it gets trapped. This is not that hard to understand, everybody. That's why we have rules about wearing a mask. Now, you know about rules. You pay taxes on the whole road, but you only get to drive on one side at a time. Otherwise, <laughs> so everyone, please wear a mask. Thank you. Oh, you can hear me fine, right to the mask. average chronically homeless person costs Salt Lake City more than $20,000 a year. It costs only $8,000 to put someone into permanent housing. Just, it, it makes it so obvious that homelessness is a choice we're making. You know, it's like we talk about, we talk about how poverty is a lot of the times a choice, yeah. how we had the expanded child tax credit and how we reduced poverty by 30 something percent. And then we, you know, let it expire and poverty shot right back up. Yes. And we're all just sitting on our asses choosing to have our fellow humans sleep on the street. Yep. And it makes me sick. It's terrible. Club bangers, but it's just really depressing statistics. Despite making up less than 2% of the population, there's been over 500 anti-trans bills proposed in the U.S. just this year. But tonight, the only thing transitioning is this sick-ass Okay, I need a cat expert to tell me why my cat just did this. She just ran into the room, left this on my carpet, and then zoomed out. Excuse my dirty carpet. This is my art room. So, 
Like what? <laughs> oh my God, did my cat just come out to me? Sweetie, I'm, yeah, I love you no matter what. I love you. I love you so much. And when mommy gets home, we can sit down and tell her and she's gonna be so proud of you. Once you find out whether you're high or low visual weight, it is gonna change your life. Are you fairy girl coquette aesthetic? Are you Y2K aesthetic? Are you punk aesthetic? Are you emo aesthetic? Do you fit into a box? Are you rat pretty? Are you frog pretty? Are you tree pretty? Are you dog pretty? Are you pretty? If you don't have a 10 step skincare routine and a hair mask and oil every part of your body and shave every single part of your body and have a lip mask and have an eye mask and have a mask for your mask, what the fuck are you doing? You don't want to be putting lipstick on a pig, do you? Are the 10 year old girls in Sephora prettier than you? We should just talk shit about them and never critique the societal standards that may have caused this. That'll make you feel better. Do you have the Stanley Cup? Do you have the special edition Stanley Cup where it's the same cup but the tag had a heart on it for Valentine's Day? Are you laminating that tag and putting it back on your cup so people know you're better than them? Are you a high value woman? Are you gonna earn a high value man? I'm so glad my modesty can prove that all those other whores look horrible. When I get up, I won't be under capitalism. When I get up, I won't be under- Yeah, so just want to let you guys know, um, we're passing an anti-boycott law. Be very scared. Um, okay. Why, why, why would you do that? So technically this law will just prevent companies from refusing business with Israel, but also we know it'll scare Americans maybe with all this boycott stuff, because do you know how much money, do you know how much money that they've lost us? Like, uh, it's been a lot of money. <laughs> right, billions and billions of dollars, sorry about that. Um, you said you're gonna make it a felony, though? Yes. So I'm assuming you know that felons can't vote, right? Oh yes, of course, that's literally the whole point. <laughs> right, right, so back to, back to the businesses. So you're saying if the Caterpillar company that makes these bulldozers that are going to Israel decides, hey, we don't want our bulldozers going to Israel anymore. I saw the news article about them burying Palestinians alive under the dirt by bulldozing their homes with them inside of them and bulldozing their camps. That would be illegal to you? Um, yeah, they're refusing to do business with Israel. What part of, <laughs> what part of this do you not understand? Right, right. Because bulldozing people to death is also not a problem. Um, so another issue I have. Okay, what else? So during the Black Lives Matter protests, when they hit their peak around 2020, um, the United States government had a huge issue with how um, violent the protests were. And they said that there was ways to peacefully protest. Do you not see boycotting as a form of peaceful protest? Okay, so yes, but, but you know, you know that we meant peacefully protest in a way that it wouldn't matter and we could just ignore it. We can't ignore losing billions and billions of dollars. Do you know, do you know how much money has been lost? So would you say it's safe to say that some Americans should be concerned about protecting their freedom of assembly? Because I know you said this was really only for businesses, but it's definitely, you know, seeing this headline in the news that you guys are trying to do this, it's definitely scaring a lot of us who are boycotting and also those of us who are protesting. Well, I mean, yeah, the goal is to get all of you to shut the fuck up, but that wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to do something like that. I mean, you, the stuff we're doing already is pretty unconstitutional, but if we went that far this quickly, I know you guys wouldn't let that happen. So pretty much everything we're trying to do, we're going to do it as quickly and as quietly as possible. Right. Well, thanks for talking. Yes, of course. And never forget that America is of the people, by the people, and for the people. Right. <laughs> the thing I ever interpreted for was a birth.
I find it really funny when people say straight men would never date a trans woman. And the other day I posted a video about that, where I mentioned how A, I don't care, and B, the vast majority of people who hit on me are moderates and conservative straight men. And I got a few responses from people who follow me who obviously know that I'm trans, saying that it's cap. And I find that really funny because we're talking about men. Men. The irony of people saying that men will literally anything with the whole, but then they won't believe that they're interested in trans women is so fascinating to me. Also, yes, my foundation shade does not perfectly match me, but I'm using foundation that's three years old, which is definitely expired. So if I'm not afraid of the atrocities that I'm committing against my skin, what makes you think I'm afraid of having the wrong shade? Somehow we can recognize that men are horn dogs, but we can't extend that to their attraction to trans women. And let me just remind you that the same group of people that hated queer people 30 years ago, the ones who couldn't stand the idea of queer people getting married, are the number one consumer of trans media. It's not lost on me that the same people who just 30 years ago did not want us to get married or have the same rights as them are the ones who engage and consume us behind closed doors. So how is it lost on you that straight men would be attracted to trans women? We all know that there are more out queer people now than there were 30 years ago. And every time that's brought up, people will say it's because it's a trend. When the reality is it's not trendy to be queer now, it's just safer. And we know that's the case because we can look at how left-handedness has been socially perceived over the course of time and how the rates increased and then stabilized once it became more socially acceptable. So it makes sense why people have to put on this performance that they hate queer people when in reality a lot of people are queer or attracted to queerness and have been for a long time. I genuinely believe that if we work towards a society where people's sexuality wasn't questioned when they're attracted to trans people, in a world where being viewed as gay isn't wrong because ultimately that's the issue, people feel like attraction to transness makes them gay. We would see a lot more straight men, including conservative men, who feel like they need to amp up their masculinity and present in a way that is traditional because they're afraid of the truth being found out. They're afraid of people knowing that they are queer or they're attracted to queerness. So yes, yeah, straight men are attracted to trans women, even if a lot of the times they don't want to admit it. And you might see me and think you're not that attractive. I just don't buy it that behind closed doors, conservative men are really trying to chase you. Which is again ironic because I know we've seen all of those videos of beautiful women showing ugly women that their partners cheated on them with. And all of the comments are like, no one's safe, men are dogs, men will literally sleep with ugly women when they have a beautiful woman at home. They have no standards. And hey, you might not personally be attracted to trans people and that's okay. But your dad is an entirely different story. from a thousand years ago, they're always either male or female. And Archaeology professor Howard Williams here, and I've got an answer for you. They're not always male or female. But then you knew that, didn't you? And if you didn't know that, you can go and check out my playlist about transgender burials. But I think you knew it. Because I don't think you spent all your time eating ice cream. Although you do spend a lot of your time regurgitating alt-right talking points that are implying transphobia. But you knew that. You knew that. But if you didn't know it, you can go and watch my playlist. Go on. Go watch my playlist. Go learn something. I've got a YouTube video about it too. Go watch it. YouTube video, TikToks. Cut out the ice cream. Cut out the regurgitated alt-right talking points. Go learn. Go on. I'm waiting. Go learn and I'll answer any real questions you might actually have having understood the theory, methods, techniques and practice of mortuary archaeology. You're welcome. Yeah, but if you kick every woman beater out of the country, then who's going to serve in our police force? Oh, that's not... You can't say yeah, that. Fuck Why don't you say so? Listen, there's a lot of theories on why Link is a silent protagonist. You know, he doesn't speak because he's a literal link between the player and the game. They're meant to fill in the dialogue themselves. Well, that's wrong. It's because that twink motherfucker is deaf, doesn't know how to sign. He doesn't want to admit he's been lip reading for 17 years. That is the face of a man who has never heard anyone ever. That's what I look like trying to lip read across a busy room. Ah, oh, he's got the wee fancy pointy ears, but they're just for show. They're for aesthetic. He's just a twink with a hearing problem, but I feel represented.
you know, before the boss battles, the enemies are shit talking him and going, ah, there's no way we could break this guy. He's so stoic. And all Link's thinking is, why do these motherfuckers never have lips? Oh, he's a strong, silent type, always practicing the blade because you don't need to negotiate when you have the master sword. But he's the princess's bodyguard. Surely she would know he just handed her a frog and let her talk and it was mutually beneficial for both parties. Nintendo, just give me this. Lily Gladstone gave a part of her speech in the Blackfoot language. So what? It's way more important than you probably know. I think there's a lot of people who believe that indigenous languages died hundreds of years ago. However, single-handedly, the largest contribution to language loss in indigenous communities comes from boarding schools. These boarding school systems who mass collected children, abused them, uh, led to many deaths and where abuse was linked to speaking their own language. This led to a mass extermination of language, culture, and of children. And when we talk about things being stolen, this is a perfect example. During Deb Holland's tour of healing, um, she was listening to tons of people speak about their experiences of most people having grandparents who were in these boarding school systems. And a woman spoke about how she will never dream in Salish of no fault of her own because it was taken from her family. It was taken from her. Her grandmother dreamed in Salish, but she never will. My mother's first language was Aymara. My mother dreamed in Aymara, and that was taken from her. When colonial systems extracted her and allowed for her adoption by a white family in the United States. As of 2016, there's estimated 2,900 speakers of the Blackfoot language. And in an industry where exactly as Lily said, audio used to be recorded in English and played in reverse to show indigenous languages. She stood in front of that room and she made them listen and she made the world listen on live TV. As someone who went from right to left in college, I can tell you definitively, it's because college teaches and emphasizes source validity. And many college courses, you have to participate in devil's advocate exercises where you're intentionally assigned a difficult to defend position, but you'll get a good grade on it if you present it objectively using credible sources. One time I was in a toxicology class and had to defend the use of e-cigarettes, which is obviously a difficult stance to take. But when looking at the data, I realized the only way that I could properly present this was to say that they're slightly better than traditional tobacco. Tobacco. And I got a good grade on it, not because my professor agrees with the use of e-cigarettes, but it was because I presented it objectively using credible sources. So if you can't write an essay or create a presentation defending your stance, no matter how unpopular it is, you're getting a bad grade, not because your professor disagrees with you, but because your stance lacks logic and reason. And if you kick every person who speaks about colonization, genocide, and oppression out, who are you going to base your tan character's struggles off of, white fantasy authors? Oh, oh that's, that's in not the sense what... that. Bring back $900 rent. I keep telling y'all we all need to go on a rent strike. Every state. Oh, baby, housing should be free. It should be a right. But y'all ain't ready for that conversation. say from um the river to the sea because it's like then where will i go this is what i hear when i hear people like her say stuff like that but daddy i want the palestinians homeland for my second vacation home give it to me now some veruca salt shit we're disabled of course people treat us like children Hey, little guy. We're disabled. Of course people assume we're sad. We're disabled. Of course people call us Speed Racer. Hot Wheels. Speed Demon. Speedy Gonzalez. We're disabled. Of course people apologize to us for no reason. We're disabled. Of course people assume we can't. We're disabled. Of course everyone thinks we're an inspiration. We're disabled, and of course our people face overwhelming systems of oppression and discrimination that make living a healthy, happy, comfortable life significantly harder than it is for non-disabled people. Of course, we need to overgrow the systems and demand the rights and dignities that we deserve. Rise up! <laughs> 
or the ocean and you live in Canada, go to the link in my bio to sign the petition calling on Parliament to refurbish the Vancouver Island Rail Corridor. I can't believe we just get up every day and go to our little jobs like things are normal. Multiple mass unalivings across the country. Some of them are our fault. Our tax dollars support them. Nobody asked me what I want my tax money to go to. It's illegal for me to not have health insurance, but it's not illegal for the health insurance companies to not fulfill their end of the deal and actually provide you with goddamn health insurance. The president is a really bad guy. A really bad guy. And then people keep trying to bully us to vote for him again later this year. Because they're like, well, the other guy's a badder guy. I don't want a bad guy. Can't we just get a good guy? God damn it. If we pinky promise to be on our best behavior, you think they'll let us skip the election and not have a president? I'm dying. Climate change is coming out as hot and heavy. The earth wants us off this bitch. But I'm still clocking in on time every day. No one can afford a house, but there are multiple houses sitting empty across the country. Keep building cop cities in some of the most racist, worst places in this country while they think we're not looking. I'm dying. If you feel yourself starting to get desensitized because of the insane numbers you're hearing right now, I'll tell you a little story. So I'm American from America. Yes, a very common thing that happens in America are shootings, right? They happen quite often. I remember at a certain point, I started to see 16 people in this one, 13 in that one, 17 in the next one. And then I heard of one with 50, 50 people in my state, in Florida. I remember seeing that number, being horrified by it. But what happened the next time something like that occurred and it was 12 people, I was much more desensitized. It was like, well, at least it wasn't 50. That's what my brain did until I took a second and I realized this is not 12 people. This isn't a number. This is one person with family, friends, colleagues, coworkers, crossing guards that they used to always say hi to down the street. Hopes, dreams, goals, aspirations, New Year's resolutions, all of those things, one person, plus another person with a family, with goals, with dreams, with colleagues, with coworkers, with thousands of people they've met throughout their lives. All of those people being affected by that other one loss, plus another. And that's just, and it just keeps going. That's what helps me to no longer be desensitized, to not be like, this is just something that happens in life because each one of these people was a life. It is not just 30,000 people. They were Amal Zakaria Ali Alastal. She was my age. They were Jude Hassan Ali Hasuna. She was seven years old, my niece's age. They were Alaman Firas Fami Al Najjar, five years old, my nephew's age. They were Antasar Jabbar Muhammad Al Mazri, my mom's age. They were Ahmed. Ishmael Muhammad Al Kurd, my dad's age. If you need to find a way to connect each of these people to yourself to keep you from being desensitized, please do that because the last thing they need right now is for us to just see the number and just think of it as a number. These are not numbers, these are human lives. So, yeah, that's all. <laughs> I released a groundbreaking report into asexual experiences in the UK and the gender critical crowd really didn't like it. They do not believe that asexual discrimination exists and to prove that they harassed me nonstop for over a week and continue to every day. I think it's quite worrying when there is that much backlash, not because of how it personally impacts me, but because I worry that it's going to make other asexual people think that if they come out, then they're gonna get the same kind of attention that I'm getting and they're gonna be attacked en masse. I think one standout for me in the report was just how the conversion therapy for asexual people tends to manifest and that it usually starts off coming from GPs and it often comes through gynecology and particularly the issues surrounding smear tests and when you're supposed to get those and the lack of provisions for people that haven't had penetrative sex before um, and how that process can often lead into the medicalization of their experience.
I feel like a lot of you don't actually understand where the word mansplain comes from. Okay. So basically, to dumb it down, it comes from man plus explain. Man was named after the German novelist Thomas Mann because he was a man. Then there's the word explain, which essentially comes from X plus plain. And X is someone you used to date. In this case, it was Thomas Mann's X. You with me? And the word plain means boring because long plane rides are boring. Thomas Mann murdered his ex because they were too boring. Then he wrote a very complicated book called Death in Venice explaining why he murdered his boring Italian ex. So now whenever you see a man explaining something like Thomas Mann did, we call that mansplaining.